you're watching RCN. Hello fellow Americans, I'm Jade Morgan. And I'm Rachel Girardi. And welcome to the RCL Show. This evening we have an expert and debaters that will delve into the harms and benefits of the electoral college system. In light of the recent election results, Previous Twitter posts from Mr. Trump himself have gone viral, such as, The Electoral College is a disaster for democracy, written on November 6, 2012. However, going against what Mr. Trump had previously spoken about in 2012, in 2016 he tweeted, The Electoral College is actually genius in that it brings all states, including the smaller ones, into play. Campaigning is so much different. So, Mr. Trump, what are your beliefs? Seeing Mr. Trump's ever-changing beliefs on the Electoral College system, it raises questions. Is the Electoral College a truly efficient and useful tool within the United States? Joining us tonight is expert Zach Olson, who will give us a more context on exactly what the Electoral College consists of. The Electoral College was formed during the writing of the Constitution. It was designed so that when colonies were electing the president, the electors of the original 13 states would meet and give the overall results of the state's voting process. While it is thought to be the electoral college that is known as today, it was actually changed once. The first electoral college was the skeleton for what it is known for today. The first electoral college allocated electors for the number of senators plus two. The manner of choosing the electors were left to the states so that the states felt like they had more power during the voting process. Congress members and federal employees were prohibited from serving as electors. The electors of each state were to meet as a group, and then that group would go to the bigger meeting where all the states convened. The electors were to vote, uh, place two votes. One was to be for someone who is not a member of that state, and the second was to be for whoever the people voted for. And the votes of the electors were to be sealed and transmitted from the state that the votes were placed to the president of the Senate. The reason for the change in the Electoral College was because of the tie between Jefferson and Burr, and a recount had to occur 37 times. Thank you, Mr. Olson, for that very insightful history on the Electoral College. Now, furthering our perspectives on the Electoral College, we are joined tonight by two scholars with differing views on the system. Atarv Gupe is a political activist and lawyer based in Greenville, South Carolina, while Siobhan Leonard is a political journalist who lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Hello, Atarv and Siobhan, and welcome to the show. We're just going to ask you a few questions to give our viewers insight into the two sides of such a controversy. Despite the fact that Americans are strongly divided on such an issue, a vast majority have little to no knowledge on the roots of the Electoral College. It seems that every four years, the losing party calls the Electoral College a threat to democracy, while the winning party appreciates the success it brings them. Because of this, do you think that the system is still relevant today, or should it be dissolved or modified in any way? America is a land of equality, and such a notion extends to the equal save of all our states. Our nation is currently becoming increasingly urbanized to a point that a proportional system would shun the voices of millions of Americans from coast to coast. The rural American, be it in Maine or California, is increasingly becoming a minority demographic and I believe that keeping the incumbent system saves their interests and makes their points heard by the whole nation. Minority disagreement forces the increasingly urban majority to question their actions, ultimately sparking a new dawn of innovation in our country that is acceptable for all. The Electoral College is definitely not relevant in this age of politics. Originally, the, ele the Electoral College system was created by the Founding Fathers because they did not have faith in the average American voter. The Electoral College was, suppo was actually supposed to be done away with long ago, but still remains in practice. Under the current system, a vast majority of states are already ignored by candidates, including not only most of the small states, but several of the largest as well. The greater share of attention goes to an increasingly small number of swing states that could favor either candidate. 
Presidential campaigns that only appeal to residents in swing states are essentially distorted campaigns, focusing on issues that may only affect people in Florida or Pennsylvania, for example. Also, in response to Athar's comment about the rural American becoming a shrinking demographic, the, royal mi the rural minority is largely represented elsewhere, such as in Congress, unlike minorities in large cities. Especially in the recent election, the possibility of rigged elections or faulty voting has become a hot button issue. Do you believe the electoral college system eliminates and reduces or facilitates this possibility? A common misconception is that voter fraud undermines U.S. elections. On the contrary, fraudulent votes are nearly non-existent. This was proved by research conducted by the George W. Bush administration. They found that out of about 197 million votes cast in the two federal elections under Bush, the rate of voter fraud was less than a million of a percent. However, to directly address your question, to a certain extent, yes. However, the little fraudulent votes that exist should be corrected with voting reform and not through the decision of the Electoral College. But what has happened since the Bush presidency? The U.S. immigration rate has nearly doubled in the last 14 years. I'll not generalize that such a population causes fraud per se. Sir, you're not answering the question. Let the tarp have his turn. The Electoral College will help sort out increasingly uneducated votes during a transition of policy. I will agree that our education level has been steadily increasing until the late 20th century, but there are more and more voters new to U.S. policy and have no experience to vote during a transition of power. Our Electoral College has to be educated on such issues to save our country from the mistakes made by our people. Siobhan, could you explain to the public how popular vote could be won, even if the results do not support this? Even though the American public could overwhelmingly support one candidate, the Electoral College is the main determining factor, meaning that the future president is essentially chosen by electors, nominated through senators. Electors include political activists, party leaders, elected officials of the state, and more. In the past 16 years, the popular vote has gone against the Electoral College twice, as well as 10% of the time throughout history. Perhaps the biggest upset was in 2000, with the loss of Al Gore against George W. Bush. Although Gore won the popular vote by a mere 500,000 votes, he did not become president. Atarf, even though the Electoral College doesn't evenly represent population, are there any net benefits to the system given our nation's economic and geographic diversity? Eight of the ten states with the highest population have an average household income greater than the U.S. national average. Meanwhile, seven of the ten smallest states have among the lowest average incomes nationwide. It is commonly known that the lower income bracket will be hurt much harder under policy that goes against their ideologies. I do agree that the incumbent system does not evenly distribute votes, but low income voters whose lives are truly and dearly affected by policy are the ones who have a deservingly higher say in our election. Overall, do you think the Electoral College helps or hurts the country? The Electoral College fosters more disagreement between demographics and a purely proportional system. However, this type of disagreement is actually what helps our country thrive and innovate. We should work on unifying the country, not dividing it. The Electoral College does not reflect the views of a true democracy. The word democracy is subjective. The Electoral College system gives a voice to those who would otherwise not be heard. The demographics who need a say the most get that say in a trustworthy and educated institution and helps our country communally improve. But the Electoral College violates the one vote system that comprises of the popular vote, which truly gives everyone their own voice. The system only relies on key swing states to determine the outcome of the election. How is that equal voices? This system has been in place since the 1700s and it's proven its worth since that time. How can you expect the country to run as efficiently as it has for over 200 years how without such you, an institution? How can you define efficiency as something that allows a candidate to receive more votes and still not be the president of our country? Besides, there are many countries that do not use the electoral college system, such as France, Mexico, and South Africa, all of which have proved to be successful democratic models. Successful democratic models? Okay. <laughs> As we can see, the Electoral College system is still quite a decisive issue. We hope you've gained some knowledge from this and can create your own opinions. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We'd like to thank our expert, Mr. Olson, and our interviewees, Mr. Gupte and Ms. Leonard, for such a lively discussion.